What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is another modified Nerf Strife. This is just a verbal summary of the modifications and my opinion on the project. Starting out with the internal modifications done to the Strife. First, I replaced the flywheels and the flywheel housing with a worker kit, which replaces the flywheels themselves, the motors, and the flywheel housing itself. This kit had orange flywheels in the spiral configuration, so it's intended to rifle the darts or spin them out of the, the flywheel housing. It's supposed to increase accuracy. I haven't shot slow-mo footage to see if it's actually effective to see if the darts are spinning, but the performance is pretty solid, so I certainly won't complain. I ripped out all of the factory wiring so none of the original wiring exists in this blaster and I have a high flow micro switch on the rev trigger so it's all high flow low resistance pretty awesome stuff and to install this high flow switch I used a little 3d printed part made by out of darts he has an Etsy store which I'll link to in the description box below this little mount is really simple but it just made the installation of this micro switch really swift very easy and pretty much dummy proof when you're trying to hot glue in one of these switches you have to guess and check and it's a little bit of work and it's just kind of annoying using one of these 3d printed mounts completely takes away all of that annoyance and makes it really fast and easy. So very happy with that component by Out of Darts. And that's all wired up to an XT60 connector, which I connect my LiPo battery pack to in the factory battery tray right here. I typically use IMRs on my channel because it's much faster and you don't have to replace the wiring or anything. It's a much quicker mod. But I've used LiPos and off-camera projects for the last few years and I accept that they're way better, but I just didn't want to put the time in for every project that I do to, to use the LiPos. If you're trying to get the absolute best performance out of your flywheel blaster, I would recommend a LiPo instead of the IMRs or the Ultrafires. I'm using XT60 connectors now instead of the Deans. That's just what all my LiPo packs are wired up to, so it's easy for me. I don't have an opinion on XT60 versus Deans, whatever floats your boat. And to fit that LiPo into the factory tray, I dremeled out all of the tray, so it's like kind of empty now. And I also bought an extended battery cover, which is this 3D printed component right here. This isn't technically necessary for the battery size that I'm using. I can fit all the wiring in with the factory plate, but this is a whole lot easier because I can just put the wires right on top of the battery and it all fits in much faster. And I personally don't think that destroys the cosmetics of the piece and it's just way easier and faster to use. And right now I'm running on a 3S LiPo or 11.1 volt um, LiPo battery pack. Moving on, I also have a flappy paddle here so I can do a tactical reloads a little bit faster. Flappy paddle being extended magazine release. And now to the select fire kit. Okay, so I've used two of these now and at this point both of them have failed. So I'm a little turned off of the select fire kits. I used one a while back for this gray project and it worked out well until I eventually burned out the select fire motor. It uses a 180 motor in the back here and eventually I fried it and I killed the whole kit. So this now has the standard mechanical strife trigger in there. Kind of a bummer. I thought, hmm, maybe it's just the IMRs. Maybe I did something wrong, whatever. Ordered another kit, installed it with this one. The 2S LiPo I used uh, set off a battery alarm. So my 3S LiPo, it was working fantastic. And the 3S LiPo is what I used for the firing demo. But then I set down the blaster to go get my chronograph. I came back and it was smoking like... <laughs> Scared the crap out of me. Unfortunately, I didn't get any photos or video because right when I saw that smoke, ran to grab my fire extinguisher, ran to just unplug the power source. You know, I was trying to like not burn my house down. It's funny, for years, people are like, ultra fires and IMRs, you're gonna burn your house down, bro. That like fourth or fifth project with a LiPo and I smoke it, like what the F? Nothing was technically on fire to my knowledge, but it was smoking out of the blaster and it was like kind of hardcore, but if I wasn't worried about burning my house down, it could have been cool. So uh, that motor was also destroyed and that was, I mean, I left the kit on, but I left it on and I set it down, probably walked away for five minutes trying to set my chronograph up and it destroyed itself. I really hope that it was human error. I really hope that I screwed up both times um, and this product isn't effective. But at this point, I'm not gonna use this select fire kit anymore. Other people have had great experiences with it, so I can't say it's a, it's a flawed product, but I'm done with that. So it originally had the select fire kit installed, but now it's back to the mechanical trigger. Uh, it's just a strife standard trigger. So yeah, that's a whole bunch of information you probably didn't care about my experiences in almost burning my house down. It's a gross exaggeration. It smoked a little bit. It wasn't, I didn't burn my house down. But that's it for the internal modifications. I'm very happy with the performance out of this strife, even with the standard mechanical trigger. The LiPo has the very fast <laughs> rev up time, getting great velocity and very little bog down. So when you're finger banging and you're like, 10, 15 darts in, it's not like your motors are bogging due to a weak power source like IMRs or ultrafires. The LiPo sends as much current as these uh, motors can take, so you can shoot fast, repeatedly, which is super fun. But that is all of the internal modifications. Now to this external kit. This is an F10 555 or Worker 3D printed Scorpion Evo kit, which I've used quite a few times on my channel now, because this is my favorite kit that they make. It has a pretty short barrel, so it doesn't hinder the range or performance that bad, and I just think it looks really cool, which of course is just personal taste. It's not objectively better. It doesn't give any performance boost or anything. 
it just looks super cool. And it is painted, it doesn't come this way out of the box, so it has a black vinyl dye primer coat, a blue color coat, and then I have small black and yellow details. Finished up with a matte clear coat. I think it looks really cool. Then I have a cheapo little red dot, I think I bought for like 20, 25 bucks, I'll link to that in the description box. Completely because it looks awesome, I wouldn't really use it in a Nerf War. And over here I have a cheapo little laser sight. It doesn't stay very well calibrated, um, but it, it looks cool. Both of these are not for their function, they just look sweet. <laughs> Decided to go with a really bright and obnoxious paint job because this one would be a lot safer to use in a public space. Compared to something like this, my last Strife project, which is gray, and that's just asking to get shot if you want to use that in an outdoor Nerf War. But overall I'm really happy with how the project turned out. I think it looks really cool and it performs really well. What else can you ask for? So that concludes the summary of my Strife modification video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, bros, stay tactical. cool.